want you to remember that God, God's created everything you see. He breathed it into existence. You remember when his people were caught up in slavery? He rescued them. What he did was he parted the sea and he made a way for them and then he delivered their enemies to them and he unlocks wounds and he provides water from a rock and he provides manna from heaven and he brought down the walls of Jericho. He froze the sun allowing victory. He's toppled giants with tiny stones. He's brought fire from heaven. He shut the mouths of lions. He preserved life in the belly of a well. He's fed thousands with a few loaves. He gives the weak strength. He heals the sick. He's made the blind see, the deaf ear, the mute speak, the lame walk, and he's overcome evil, and he's made a way through death for you and me by the death and the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ, that we will live with him forever. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. What are we afraid of? His resume is flawless. He controls everything. And he loves you. Hey, good evening, Fusion family and everyone watching online. We are jumping into our Good Friday service. Man, this is so different than anything I would have ever expected. This is our uh, second Good Friday service. We hit our one-year anniversary as a church replant last week. Uh, I would have never imagined that we were going to be doing Good Friday and Easter like this, but man, I am choosing, rather than getting caught up in the preferences I have about how I would rather do church or, man, how I wish things would have gone, I am celebrating the season we're actually in. Man, by God's grace, man, 10, 15 years ago, if there was a snowstorm out and we had to cancel church, there was no church. But because of our ability to use technology, to stream, to do virtual services, we can bring service right in to your living room, into your dining room, into your kitchen, and you guys are brought into mine. So we're still able to gather together on this Good Friday together as a family, one body together celebrating our Good Friday service. So nothing is going to stop the church, not COVID-19, none of the challenges in my life or your life. God is still king. Jesus still sits on that throne and he is going to have the victory in this season. For me, you know, I'll be quite honest, Good Friday and Easter has never felt so significant before. It really hasn't. As I think of where we're at in the Christian calendar, we're right in the middle of Holy Week. Holy Week started on Palm Sunday, celebrating Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, but for him, it started his journey to the cross. Jesus knew how it would all end, even though he prophesied that to his followers, his disciples, the apostles. Man, they had no clue it was going to end in his death and in his suffering. They certainly did not remember that he was going to rise from the dead. For us, we look at at this wonderful book, our Bibles, and, and we can look at it from a, a 60,000 mile view straight down, and, and we know the whole story. So for me, Good Friday is a story of hope. When I was a kid, I struggled with this idea of Good Friday. I was like, why do we call it good? Jesus hung himself on a cross and he died. What's good about that? So if you're sitting there at home right now and you're like, man, I have thought the same thing. The reason why we call it Good Friday is because our focus is actually not necessarily his death and pain, but rather what it ushered in for you and I. It was through Jesus' sacrifice that healing was brought forth. We pray to God today for healing. We believe in a God who heals uh, because, of Scripture says, by his stripes we are made well. By the suffering he endured, we do not have to endure suffering. By the, by the whippings, by the hanging himself on the cross, healing is brought forth uh, into our lives uh, and, and salvation for our souls. The greatest healing you and I will ever need in this life and hopefully experience will be the healing of your soul and mind. We have 
Man, there's two sicknesses in this life that we, that we have as, as believers and even unbelievers. And, and all of us are drawn to God. We're all on a spiritual journey. If you showed up at this service today and you're like, man, I don't really know what I believe about God, uh, but, but I'm here. COVID-19 is looming a, a above us and I just need hope. And I just hope that pastor says something that's going to encourage my soul. Man, I hope that too. No pressure, right? Uh, but, but the reality is there is only... There's only one hope in Christ and we have spent our lives chasing comforts. Man, idols of work, right? We've, we've sold ourselves out to chase financial uh, freedom. Uh, I say freedom, but really it's, it's spending, right? It's, it's uh, consumerism. It's, it's hoarding of possessions because we thought it would make us happy. And we made more money and we bought more things and it was never enough and we did that more. And when that became bankrupt and empty in our lives, We went to other vices and other things. And some of us became predators of relationship. We predated on other people in our lives and exploited them emotionally because really we thought they were the answer to our problems. We've jumped in and out of relationships. And now here in the middle of COVID-19, the world has gotten quieter in some ways. I mean, not if you're watching the news, right? But, but reality is we're home. Some states are a total shut-in situation. New York State here, we're on quarantine and we're asked to, everything short of hiking in the outdoors, we're, we're asked to stay home. Even now this week, they're saying, hey, don't go to supermarkets, stay away from gas stations. Um, you know, so, so here we are, the world seems quieter and we are searching for meaning. We are searching for purpose. We're asking why all of this. And I can't help but to think that that's exactly what the apostles felt. Think about this on Good Friday, 2000 years ago. You know, Jesus just a week earlier has his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And they thought, man, he's going to tear down Rome and he's going to be king who sits on the throne and he's going to rule and he's going to have victory over what we think he's going to rule and have victory over. But instead what they found was their Messiah, their Lord, the guy that they followed around for approximately three and a half years, hung himself on a cross and he died. And they didn't understand the full purpose of his mission. They didn't know that he was redeeming them from sins. Man, yesterday was, uh, was Holy Thursday. And Holy Thursday for us really commemorates the moment of that last supper. supper and, um, and Jesus gave us the you know, the uh, celebration of communion, which we are going to partake in today. So you guys should have received an email. If you did not, at the end of the service, we're going to join and have communion together. Uh, The way you can do that right now, you can go up and uh, go get some crackers out of your uh, cupboard and a little bit of uh, juice maybe, or, or even some bread as I did, and we can celebrate communion together. But we do that because Jesus instituted it yesterday, right on Holy Thursday. Today being Good Friday, is that day again, like I said, that we just celebrate this good news that our sin debt was paid. So, so why is that so important to us? Because for us, it really is another Passover. It's, it's the fulfillment of the Passover story. What was Jesus celebrating this week, 2000 years ago? Passover. Passover was that moment where the spirit of the Lord passed over all of the Israelite homes back in the book of Exodus. Uh, they, they smeared a lamb, uh, the blood of a lamb over their doorframe and the spirit of the Lord passed over them and none of their firstborn were killed. God preserved them. And those that did not have the covering of God Ex, uh, experience the full punishment or wrath of God for their due sin. That was justice. You and I deserve justice. The Bible is very clear that the wages of sin is death. That means if you and I have sinned once, we deserve death. But Jesus hung himself on a cross to be our lamb slain, right? So the wages of sin is death. Forgiveness of sin requires blood. So Jesus, if we put our faith and our trust in Jesus, right? And we confess that with our mouth. The Bible says we're saved. But what his arms spread wide is all about is that if you stand beneath his arms in faith, figuratively speaking, right? I place my faith in Jesus. His blood is smeared over your doorpost and mine. And man, justice, punishment, all of that judgment passes over you because Jesus was your lamb slain and mine. And that to me, folks, is a good news story. I need that more this Good Friday than I ever did in my life because just like the apostles 2,000 years ago today, they were walking into an unknown. You and I, um, president says, every news outlet says that this week and next are gonna be incredibly difficult for this country. I already know a number of people 
uh, directly or indirectly who have passed away due to COVID-19. Many of you sitting there right now trying to enjoy this service with us are thinking and feeling the, the same thing. And, and you have very similar stories. Every one of us has been inconvenienced, has been hurt, is mourning COVID-19. Uh, some of us in a very mild way have just been inconvenienced. We're told to stay home. Others have been inconvenienced and lost somebody dear to us. Or we fear the loss of ourselves, our own lives, or the loss of others. And, and that's where these apostles were. They followed Jesus around for three and a half years and all of a sudden he's hung on a cross. And I can only imagine in that moment, all of their hope, all of their dreams, all that they envisioned was gone. And they felt extreme despair and frustration. But Jesus endured that cross for you so that you would not have a past that is negative. You would not be judged uh, at final judgment, that his blood would cover you and you would be made holy and righteous as he is. Your sins your guilt, your shame would all be forgiveness. And through Jesus' sacrifice, healing was brought forth, forth in your life. Man, I have had the gift, the honor, and the privilege to pray alongside folks uh, this week that were hospitalized due to COVID-19. And look, honestly, not everybody gets healed. We know that. And we don't all understand why God answers some prayers and why he doesn't answer others. And I'm not going to give you that answer today. I don't know if any of us fully understand the wisdom and the knowledge of God. But I will say this, I've had the privilege to come alongside people and I've seen miraculous healings, but they were healed because of that cross. They were healed because of the love of God. They were healed because he bore our sins and our pain. And I remember myself as a, as a young believer, I was riddled with anxieties. Man, I was a fearful person. I was riddled with shame and guilt of my past sins. And it chased me. It chased me like a demon in my life, like a skeleton in my closet. Many of you at home know exactly how I feel. And I turned to all sorts of vices. I chased things that I thought would make me happy, bring me comfort, that would give me significance, that would make me feel loved and validated. I mean, anything from food to relationships and everything in between, just like many of you watching. And all of them were counterfeit. All of them turned up empty in my life until I acknowledged that old rugged cross, until I recognized the work and ministry of Jesus on that cross. And that brought life to my soul. That brought hope in the midst of COVID-19 because I can have fear and faith at the same time. Fear uh, uh, is oftentimes the uh, thing that necessitates faith. Remember, faith is not the absence of fear. It's actually the presence of fear, but the awareness and the uh, certainty that God is still going to move and God is still good, even when my circumstances aren't. And I met a good God who hung himself on a cross for my emotions, for my spirituality, for my salvation, both in the life to come and in in this life. My life was redeemed. I, I don't live in fear of COVID-19. I have concerns, but man, I don't have a spirit of fear because I have a bold God who answers prayers, who heals, and it's a good news story. Man, you can put your trust in this verse. Isaiah 53 is a prophetic verse that speaks of the coming Messiah. And this is what it says. Surely he, it's talking about Jesus, took upon, uh, I'm sorry, surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Jesus took upon himself all of your pain, all of your wounds, all of your suffering in the past, in the present, and the future. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. Jesus took on the affliction and the punishment of God on that cross so you and I would not have to. Verse 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we were healed. You see, the punishment you and I rightly deserved, injustice, Jesus took upon himself so you and I would not have to be punished. The wounds he took upon himself so that healing would be brought forth in your life and mine. Man, if I get COVID-19, I don't fear because I know that there is a God who's got a bigger plan for my life. I know that there's a God who is able and capable and desiring to heal my life, heal me physically. And you have that same assurance if you put your trust in Christ. You see, your faith in Jesus is bigger than COVID-19, folks. It really is. Your faith in Christ is larger than anything that COVID-19 can possibly throw at you. And the verse goes on, verse 6, 
We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Every one of us have sinned. Every one of us have fallen short of the glory of God. We've all departed God. We've all departed Jesus. And and how do I know that? Because every one of us is guilty for having done something wrong. Either we've turned our backs on God to chase sin, to chase idols, to chase false comforts, Man, or we've sinned against our neighbor. I've sinned against my parents. I've sinned against the person next door, my best friend. Man, we've even sinned against each other with our thoughts. All of us have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid upon himself the iniquity of all of us. Man, Jesus is willing and able and capable not just to forgive you, but to heal our land, folks. And that's the good news of this. He bore it all on himself. And this is a good news that you need. This is a good news I need. This is a good news that your friends and family need. Man, right now, you can share this uh, online uh, message. Share it with someone who needs the encouragement. Because right now, we are being attacked by the negativity of COVID-19. We're being attacked by the negativity of people's emotions and, uh, and fear-mongering and, and, and whatnot. And, and we have to be able to take a stand and say, man, I place my trust in my King. I place my trust in the Word of God. I place my hope in Him. My circumstances around me may be bad, but my God is good and I stand on that truth today. My God is for me. My God is with me. Jesus, You will take away my fears, my anxieties, my sin. You will take away my iniquity. You've pulled it fully and completely onto Yourself. And and that's why we call it Good Friday. Because it's good for you and I. Man, Jesus, He took a bullet for you, uh, um, uh, speaking uh, figuratively. He took that and died in your place and mine so that all that we hope in is made true for your life and mine. And we have a very real sin problem that only Christ can heal. Only Christ has an answer to. We've talked about this in the past. When we sin, we create what we call a sin debt, right? And it's much like a credit card, right? Every time you spend your credit card, uh, you increase your debt and you're responsible to pay that off. But when it comes to sin, you and I have created a debt that only Jesus is able to pay off. There is no other way to God except through the, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He is the only way because He's the only sacrifice. There's nothing you can do to gain the pleasure of God, to gain the favor of God. You can't impress God. You can't surprise God. If you could, He wouldn't be God. Uh, but Jesus Himself is righteous. He's holy. And He credited that onto your account. What Jesus did was this. He, he placed Himself in your position up on a cross, taking punishment you and I deserve. And then he placed us in his position of being righteous and holy. And everything that you need to hope in is in Christ. Folks, hope has a name and it is Jesus. And what what sin did, sin, if it's unaddressed in your life, it separates us from God. It separates us from each other. Man, it brings death into our situation, both spiritually and physically. Do you know that COVID-19 is due to sin? Man, God created man and, and, and woman in a beautiful garden in perfect relationship with himself. He did. And there was no sin. There was no death. There was no consequences for the fall of man. Then the devil came. He was thrown down to the earth when he fell in heaven. And he is the author of death. And he tempted Adam and Eve to sin and transgress against God. And when Adam and Eve did that, sin, death, disease, virus, sickness, all of that entered this world. So not only do we have a sin debt to worry about and consequences that only Christ can make right, but we also have sickness in this life. COVID-19 is due to a very real enemy, sin, sickness, a parasite that only God can bring healing toward and only Jesus can bring peace between you and God, me and God. So man, I got to tell you guys, I'm done chasing idols. COVID-19 really put me in a position to realize, man, I know where my hope comes from. It comes from Christ. Man, before COVID-19, man, I was busy in ministry. I was busy in work. Life had me running 90 miles an hour. And yes, I would have told you then, no, my life is sold out to Christ. But as the world has gotten quieter, I have recognized God Man, I often have allowed myself to get distracted by things that are not of you. Forgive me, God. Man, I was distracted by ministry. 
Think about that as a pastor. Man, but what I am most responsible for is being a son of God, not being the greatest minister in the world. I'm a son of God first, and it's only through my intimacy with Christ that that will flow out of my life. Man, and the same thing is true with you. Every believer, every follower of Jesus is a minister. Guys, God is not impressed with titles. He isn't. Only people are. The reality is I'm just like you, and you and I are in need of the same thing, a high priest. And that's what it says in the book of Hebrews, that when Jesus ascended into heaven after his resurrection, which we're going to celebrate on Sunday, he's at the right hand of the Father, acting as advocate and lawyer on your behalf and mine. He's fighting for you. He's praying for you. He is with you in the midst of COVID-19. As our prayers come up, his prayers come down. Jesus is praying on your behalf and mine. And I put so much hope in that. And you know what the outcome of chasing all these idols are? Low self-esteem, low self-worth, low validation, shame and guilt, and our situation gets worse, which is this vicious cycle that goes round and round, and we just chase more idols in our lives. But there's a fix, guys. There's a new beginning that you and I could absolutely have in Christ. There's this new beginning by placing our hope and trust into Jesus that not only saves our soul, but it can redeem your life here in the midst of COVID-19. And you know what? What's worse than COVID-19, what's worse than the, than the situation we're in is the fear of COVID-19. Man, I got to tell you, nothing will take you out before God's time. COVID-19 is small in comparison to God. COVID-19 cannot push over or blow over your faith. My faith is firm on Christ. I'm established in his promises. I speak his promises. I filter what I think through his promises. Man, my hope is in my king, not in the news media, not in some drug that's been untested. My hope is in Jesus. I place my hope, my trust, and my faith in him. You guys, do you do the same? You can. You absolutely can. And this brings me to, a, uh, to two stories in Scripture, two men of God who had a very different view of Jesus. A, a very different view. And I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what your beliefs or your view of Jesus is. Maybe what I'm telling you today, you're like, yeah, man, I, I know that. And it's really encouraging to hear it. I, I need to hear it in the season I'm in. Maybe some of you are like, man, I thought this Christianity thing was a hoax. I thought it was fantasy. Man, I don't know what I believe about God. Man, I will tell you what you believe about Jesus can make all the difference. It will make all the difference. A matter of fact, understand this main point I want to share with you guys. Don't let your beliefs be a barrier to your blessing. Don't let your beliefs be a barrier to your blessing because what you believe may have the power to change everything. You see, what you believe has the power to change what you feel and what you're experiencing about COVID-19. What you believe in a very real way, will impact where you spend your eternity and mine. And as I look at Scripture, I think of two men who actually did life with Jesus in his earthly ministry. I think of Judas and I think of Peter. And these were two men that followed Jesus around for approximately three, three and a half years. And they saw the miracles. They saw the blind see. They saw the deaf hear. They saw the mute speak. They they saw the hungry get fed, the naked get clothed. They saw him feed the 5,000. They seen this man walk on water. They see or saw the things that you and I, that we read about, folks. They did. And, but, the, but the difference between these two guys is that they had two very different beliefs about Jesus. You see, both sinned, both transgressed against the Lord, but only one of them found his hope in Christ while the other one was lost. And when we think about the one who's lost, many of you know the story is you're already thinking, oh yeah, Judas. And when you think of the name Judas, you despise the name. You see, the name Judas became synonymous with liar, traitor, the guy who turned Jesus in, who turned his back on Christ, the, the, the vicious sinner. Not one of you thought when you had a child to name him Judas. You weren't like, come here, little baby, Judas, right? None of us thought that. But what his name really meant, what it really means is to be praised or praises. It means for God to be praised. Judas was actually a beautiful name before the story. But you see, many of us have Judas all wrong. We, we really do. We, we think of him as this evil guy who did wrong. Judas is a lot like you and I, more than we would ever like to imagine or think because of what we've been told about Judas. But what do we know about Judas? He was a man who was struggling in faith. He was a man who struggled to understand the full ministry of Jesus Christ. He was a guy who followed Jesus around. He was part of the crowd and he was investigating, but he had idols in his life. 
He wanted Jesus to be the king he wanted him to be and not the king Jesus was actually. See, Judas had his eyes set on smaller things. I want Jesus to save us from Rome, save us from tyranny, save us from occupation, which to me is big. But Jesus is like, man, I don't want to save you from the little things. I have a salvation for you. You need more than you think you need. I have a salvation for you that will save you from all things. Man, Judas, you're focused on what you think you are giving up, but you're not focusing on what you're getting in return. So many of us are there today. So many of us are like, man, I've struggled with giving my life to Christ or I've struggled with surrendering because, man, if I follow Jesus, what will I give up? I'm going to ask you a different question. If you don't follow Jesus, what are you giving up? What you're going to give up to follow Jesus is small in comparison to what you're going to receive. You see, that's the reality. What are we giving up, guys? Honestly, we're giving up idols that fall short anyway. And they're dead. They're mute idols. They're not doing it for you. Man, in the midst of COVID-19, the world again has gotten quieter and we could see God more clearly. People are tuning into God. They're tuning into church. People want to hear what God has to say because at the end of the day, when the world falls apart, the only one standing there waiting for you is not that drug. It's not that addiction. It's not pornography. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He's the only hope that this world has. He's the only fix for the problem we're in. He is going to make all things right. So Judas, you guys know the story, don't you? Uh, you know, he, he decided he was going to uh, hand Christ over and he was paid about 30 pieces of silver from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And he was waiting for that moment to turn his back on Jesus and to betray him. And we're going to pick up with Matthew 27, verse 3 to 5. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Think about this. When Judas, who had betrayed him, you and I, we've betrayed God, folks. Every time we have sinned, we've sinned, we've turned our back on God. Every time we've sinned against each other with a bad attitude, with a bad mood, we, we've fallen short of the glory of God and we've turned away from God. You and I, like Judas, we've betrayed God. But there's a fix, right? The, it, scripture tells us that God is faithful and just to forgive all of your sins, all of your transgressions, all of your iniquity. And it's not even something you have to earn. That's the beauty of Good Friday. My sin debt was paid on that cross. That is good news for you and I. So Scripture says that after Judas uh, betrayed him, he tried to return the, the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. And this is what he said, I have sinned. Judas acknowledged his sin. Just like many of you and I right now are doing, we're like, yeah, man, I've, I've fallen short. I've sinned against God. I've turned my back on God. I have found my comfort in things that COVID-19 has taken away from me. Man, I've chased work. Man, work has become a mistress to, to some of us. I've chased money. That's become a mistress to some of us. Man, some of us have stayed out of our home and we use that as an excuse to avoid our wife and children or our husband and our kids. Man, we've turned to various addictions of all sorts. We, we've turned to shopping. Some of us can't even shop anymore. But it used to meet some emotional need deep within our souls. But I have sinned and I've betrayed innocent blood. Man, he felt deep remorse in his heart, Judas sinned, he betrayed God, and he recognized his sin, just like, just like we're doing, just like we've done. And then this is the response he got back from the chief priest. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. See, that's what the devil speaks in your ear. You've sinned, you've fallen short, that's your responsibility. COVID-19 came upon you, that's for you to deal with. Man, the battle's not God's, the battle's yours. Man, COVID-19 is going to get you like it's some sort of ghost with arms. And, and the devil tells you you're on your own. God is not for you, God is not against you. That's what's being spoken into our minds and our hearts. That's what the media is speaking in. You're all alone in this thing. That's not the truth of God, folks. God is for you. God is with you. No weapons formed against you shall prosper. All things will work together for good for those who love God. Man, God is victorious. The battle is not yours, but it is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. COVID-19 is nothing compared to God. Although this is a season we're in. So the responsibility is yours, the chief priest told him. Think of how alone Judas felt in that moment. Have you ever felt that alone in your life? Maybe you are today. Maybe you're stuck in quarantine and you're feeling lonely, really lonely. And you're feeling isolated and, and depression and, de and despair is starting to sink in deep down in your soul. 
Man, you are not alone. You may feel alone, but God is with you. Scripture says with two or three gathered, He's there in their presence. Guys, we are gathering right now together in the hundreds. God is with you. He's on that couch right next to you. Look to the side and say, what's up, Jesus? He is right there. He's right there. He's there at that dining room table. God is with you. He's for you. Guys, you're not alone. The devil can't have what God has given you. If you feel like things have been taken from you, Scripture says when the thief is revealed in Proverbs that he has to pay back seven times fold, the victory is God's. You may not see it yet. You're in the midst of COVID-19. You're in the midst of quarantine. You're feeling isolated. You're feeling alone. The victory is God's. Man, you know what I see? Man, when I look with my flesh eyes, man, I see anxiety. I see depression. I see fear. But there are eyes in me. There are spiritual eyes that see the things of God, that see the promises of God. I see an end to this. I see a light at the end of this tunnel. I hold on to what my spiritual man sees, though my flesh man struggles. And and that's true for many of you. So what does this poor guy do? Judas threw the money into the temple and left then went away and hung himself. Man, this guy felt so bad. He, can, he, he said, man, I've sinned. I've betrayed innocent blood. They, they, he tried to give back the money. The chief priest said, what's that to us? The responsibility is yours. And in despair, he throws the money. Man, I don't want this. What I thought would have done it for me didn't do it. This idol, it means nothing. Man, all my hope has been dashed. He threw it away in despair and hung himself. Why didn't he run to Jesus? Man, why are you and I in our despair and anxiety and our fears not running to the Lord? Man, you see, he was, his beliefs were a barrier to his blessing. He did not understand the work and ministry of Jesus Christ. Judas missed it somehow. He may have walked with Jesus for three and a half years, but he missed the message. He missed the miracle. Man, did he stop for a moment and think, which we know he didn't. God, you're for me. God, you're with me. Man, I may have turned you over, but this sin can be forgiven. That, that You are able to do that. You're about to hang yourself on a cross where you're going to pay my sin debt. All as I have to do is surrender myself to you, God. All as I have to do is get on my knees and say, Jesus, forgive me. I've sinned. I've fallen short. I, I've fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus, as you take my sins unto yourself, credit your righteousness unto me. But you just didn't do that. Guys, you're sitting there right now. Are you doing that? When you think about your sin, are you saying, Jesus, take this from me and I receive your righteousness, God. I receive your holiness, God. Man, when I stand before the Lord in judgment, God is not going to see me, folks. He is going to see Himself, His righteousness, His goodness, His holiness. And that could be true for you too, but you have, to, you have to be willing to dump your sins on Christ and take His righteousness onto yourself. But you dismissed it. He didn't see it. There's another guy in Scripture we're going to look at. Man, and it's Peter. And and this guy fell short too. If you guys look at Matthew 14, this is a guy who walked on water. If you look at uh, uh, in Luke, man, it's just an amazing story of of Jesus' grace and mercy. Here are the apostles in Luke 22. Man, they start fighting. They, They did. They started arguing amongst themselves about who's going to be greatest in the kingdom of God. Who's going to be the greatest and you know what? And, and they fell into sin in that moment. They, they really did. They fell into sin. And then Jesus says something so peculiar. He goes, Simon, Simon, which is Peter, Satan, the devil, he has asked to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. But when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Man, Jesus is saying that to you and I right now. COVID-19, it is a response to sin. And I don't necessarily mean sin today. I, I don't understand. And I don't claim to understand how all of that works. What I know is every disease, every sickness, virus, cancer, all of it is a consequence of sin all the way back in the book of Genesis, all the way back in the first story in the Bible. It's a consequence to sin. And so is COVID-19. And, and, Man, when we sin, we took all of that consequence into this earth. And right now, just like he said to Simon Peter, I am praying for you. Satan has asked to sift you, but I'm praying for you. Man, COVID-19 is not going to have victory over your faith. COVID-19 is not going to blow it over. Why? Because your faith is founded on the rock, the truth. Jesus is with you. Jesus is for you. And he's praying on your behalf and mine. And after COVID-19, when your faith does not fail, Folks, you have work to do. And that's exactly what he told Peter. Strengthen your brothers. So then, man, what did Peter do? Jesus was telling him, 
dude, you know what? You're sitting here, you're prideful. You're telling me you're going to go with me. You're going to hang on this cross with me. You're going to die with me to the point of death. No, you're not. Just like Judas, you're going to fall short. Just like Judas, you're going to turn your back on me. Man, you're going to deny me three times. You're going to hear this crow making some racket. And every one of those is going to be a reminder for what I'm telling you right now. Each of them is a moment you've sinned against me. Judas did one big sin. Peter did three. Both men had a different view about Jesus. How is it that you see Jesus? Is your beliefs about Jesus going to bless you and bring a miracle into your life? Or are your beliefs about Jesus going to be the blocker to your blessing and mine? So, so what happened here? Jesus said, man, when you return back, after all that happens, I'm praying for you. See, Peter understood something. Man, when the Things get bad. When things get tough, I'm going to run to Jesus, man. I remember back when that storm was raging after he fed the 5,000. He was on shore. We're on a boat. We're being buffeted by the wind. We're scared. We're despairing at life. Are we going to live? Man, I I think I see him. Man, it's dark. The, The waves are crashing. The wind is there. But there's somebody walking on the water. Man, there's hope coming. Hope has a name. It's Jesus. Jesus is at you. Some of you right now are sitting there on your couch and on your dining room table. And you're like, man, all as I see around me is negativity. I see the numbers of COVID going up, of infected. I see the number of dead going up. I see darkness. It looks bleak. But I see a man walking on water. I see Jesus coming up to me. Jesus is at you. Man, If that's you, Jesus, call me out, Peter said. Some of you are saying that that right now. Jesus, I want to walk on water with you. I want faith that can withstand the weight of my pain. I want a faith that can withstand the weight of my pressure. I want a a faith that can withstand the weight of my fear. And Jesus said, Peter, come. So So Peter gets out of the boat and he starts walking. And things are going well because he's focused. He's focused on Jesus. Remember what we talked about in prior uh, prior services. Man, your faith and your fear are a product of your focus. He's focused on Jesus and he's walking on water. Man, as long as I keep my gaze on you, Christ, I'm standing. As long as I keep my my, my eyes on you, Jesus, man, I'm walking in faith. As long as I keep my eyes on you, Jesus, man, I'm secure in your word. As long as I keep my eyes on you, Jesus, I'm walking in faith and in hope. Man, my... I I may have uh, faith the size of a mustard seed, but it's throwing that mountain into the water. And then all of a sudden, Peter gets distracted and he looks to the to the left and he looks to his right and he sees the wind and he sees all those things he's afraid of and he's like, Jesus, I'm starting to sink. Jesus, I took my eyes off of you and I'm starting to go down. Jesus, I took my eyes off of you and, and I feel like I'm disappearing. And if some of you are feeling that way right now, you've been sitting on your couch for, for moments, for hours, for days, constantly watching the news and you're watching bleak report after bleak report, negativity after negativity, fearful of the numbers and you wonder why you're stricken with fear. You wonder why you're sinking like Peter did. But you know what? Jesus stuck his hand out and he said, Peter, you have a choice. You and I have a choice right now, hallelujah. You have a choice. Do I take the hand of Jesus? Do I reach my hand back up? Do I grab him as I'm sinking? Do I place my hope, my future in him? Because the Lord tells me I have a hope and I have a future for you, says the Lord. But you just have to take my hand. It's some of you right now, Man, figuratively speaking, and you know what I'm talking about, you have to let go of the negativity. You've got to stop looking to the right. You've got to stop looking to the left. And you have to look up. And you have to see that hand coming out out of heaven, willing to grab you. And that's what Peter did when, when he turned away from Christ. When he turned his back on the Lord, he knew, man, things are bad again. Last time things were bad, I ran to Jesus and he made it better. Daddy made it better. And you know what? Now things are bad. I've transgressed three times. Man, and I don't want to end up like my brother Judas. Man, he was just like me, stricken with guilt, stricken with shame, stricken with fear. Man, I'm not going down like that. My faith is too big for that. I trust in the Lord. I know where my hope comes from. It comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Jesus, I look to you in my moment of pain. Jesus, I look to you in my moment of suffering. You saved me from drowning last time. You're going to save me from drowning again because he will do it again. Folks, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. But you have to abide in Him. You have to place your truth and your trust in Him. Uh, You have to dwell in the shadow of the Most High, which means to be still, to be relaxed, to trust. Man, like Peter, we have to run to God because you see, Jesus took on the nails so you and I wouldn't have to, folks. The nails pierced His skin in His hands and His flesh so that you and I wouldn't have to. As the nails went into Christ, they came out of you. As the nails went into His hands, they came out of my hands. And I received the full forgiveness of sins, the full hope of God, the hope of healing. Jesus is for you. The responsibility of 
your sin debt of healing of this COVID-19 is not yours, but the Lord's. The debt has already been paid. Man, and then Jesus, we're going to talk about this Sunday, but He's hung on the cross, He dies, He's put in a tomb, and He raises from the dead. And let's look at what happened with Peter. So He raises from the dead, and before He ascended into heaven, Scripture says He, he, he did ministry on earth for approximately 40 days after his resurrection. And there's one night they're sitting back in an upper room situation and man, and they're sitting back to back and they're probably enjoying uh, some dinner and they're hanging out and things are going well. And Jesus asks uh, Peter in, in John 21, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, surely Lord, you, you know that I love you. And he asks him again, Peter, do you love me? And he goes, Jesus, yeah, of course I love you. I just told you that. Jesus asks him a third time, Peter, do you, do you love me? Now Peter gets frustrated and he's like, Lord, I told you I love you. I, I, I've said it three times. Jesus looks at him and he says, follow me. Would you follow me? And Jesus is saying that to you right now. He's saying, give me your hurts. Give me your wounds. Give me everything that you experience that causes you pain. Give me your shame. Give me your guilt. Give me your fears of COVID-19. Man, the sick family members and friends you have and you're praying for them, give them to me and just follow me. Would you, would you follow me, Jesus is saying to you? Would you put your hope in me? Would you put your trust in me? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. What you're dealing with out here, man, it's going to crush you if I'm not in your life. Your faith without me, your life without me is nothing. But if you put your faith and your trust in Jesus, you will have all things. You're giving up nothing, folks, and receiving the full blessing and measure of God in your life. Full healing is made possible because of what Jesus did this Good Friday 2,000 years ago on that cross, you may have a shameful past. You may have fear, but Christ has a better future for you and me. Don't be a blocker to your own blessing, folks. Don't be a blocker to your own blessing. Man, I want to give you a Scripture to hold on to, really to put your hat on, because God is doing a new thing. Isaiah 43, 18, 19 says this, Remember not the former things. Man, don't, don't look back. Don't look back to what you watched on the news yesterday. Don't look back to your past sins, your shame, your guilt. Man, don't, don't look back to the way you've been struggling lately or life before COVID-19, nor consider the things of old. Behold, man, you better watch out because I'm doing a new thing, says God. Man, what you think has come to slay you and hurt you, I'm going to birth something amazing through. Man, guys, I want to tell you, the church of God, and I don't mean Fusion Church, I mean the big C, we're reaching literally thousands, tens of thousands, if not millions of people we would have never reached prior to COVID-19. There are people right now, many of you that are turning, tuning into church for the first time because it was this vehicle of pain. It was COVID-19 that is bringing you back to God. It, COVID-19 may feel like it's going to slay us. It may be uh, something we fear. It's a horrible sickness, but God is redeeming it and using it for His purpose. It will come to an end. There is a, an end to this story and it is going to be God's victory. But before that end happens, before you and I walk into that promised land of His, uh, of his miracle, understand this, He's redeeming the season. God is using this vehicle to fix your focus, to bring it from the right, from the left, and focus it on God. COVID-19 only highlighted and made you and I realize we are sinking. Man, COVID-19 brought to light the fact that we're drowning in this water like Peter when he was walking on water because we're looking like this. We're distracted by life. COVID-19 made us look up, folks. It did, and the Lord says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? Do you not see the hand of God in COVID-19? Do you not see it coming out of heaven to grab hold of you? Guys, you just need to look up and grab hold of it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What God is saying is right now you look out and it looks bleak. It looks bad. It looks negative. But I'm going to make a way where there seems to be no way. I'm going to bring hope where there is no hope. I'm going to bring life where there's death. Guys, we as Christians have a theology of suffering because Christ suffered. If you're going through suffering today, it is not peculiar. Peculiar. It's not like something odd was happening. Suffering is, pain, is part of life. Pain and suffering is part of this life we live, folks. It's always been. And if we live, we're going to experience both times of plenty and blessing, these mountaintop moments. And if we live long enough, we're going to experience these 
These valley moments, these moments of despair and pain, these moments up here in this valley when things are going well, we often get distracted. We do. But it's in the valley where our despair necessitates our looking up to God for rescue. See, it's in the valley that God uses the pain of our lives to fix our focus on God. It's in the valley that we remember the goodness of God even when our circumstances stink. It's in the valley that we meet God face to face. It's in the valley when we are in need of a Savior that He becomes our Savior. It's in the valley when we're in need of healing that a miracle is brought forth into our life and we're healed. It's in the valley where we see the hand of God. Man, I, I'll tell you, if... if if there was no storm happening outside, Peter would have never walked on water. If there was no storm happening outside, Jesus would have never came. And you know what happened when he got in the boat? It was that first time that they worshipped him as God. See, it's in the valley when God rescues you that you for the first time and me for the first time recognize he is God. He is my Messiah. He is Yeshua. He is the hope of the world, the light of the earth, the salt of the earth. Like, it is Jesus. There's hope and it has a name. And it is my Lord and Savior. So what can we do, guys? We can put our trust in Him. We can put our hope in Him. Man, and if you're out there today and you're like, man, I want that. I, I want eyes to see. God, give me eyes to see like Peter. Man, I don't want to be left blinded like Judas. And it's not like we're giving Judas a bad rap. Every one of us can be a Judas. But God, give us eyes to see you for who you really are. May I leave behind me the former things. Maybe you're sitting there today and you believe some bad things about Jesus. I don't know how that's possible. If you just read the Bible, you realize... He is love. He is grace. He is mercy. And when it comes to judgment and sickness, it is called justice. We deserve to be punished because of sin, but it was God's grace and mercy that instead of punishment, He hung Himself on a cross to die for you. How could any one of us Think about this. If you're walking in a street and a car's coming and a good Samaritan pushes you out of the way and gets killed, would you look at that person and say, oh, that's a bad person? If someone took a bullet for you, would you think they're a bad person? And yet we have misbeliefs about Jesus who hung himself on a cross for you and me to do something no one else could have done. He is good. Scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. I want to give you that opportunity, but it starts with us saying, God, in faith, and you can do this right now at home, Give me eyes to see, Lord. Give me eyes to see you in a way, a fresh way I never have before. God, close my eyes to the things that are negative, to my past, to my shame, to my guilt. Close my eyes to the media. God, and open my eyes to you. Like Peter, I'm drowning right now, Lord. And I lift my hand up out of the water. And I know, God, you were faithful to... Peter, you will be faithful to me. I know, God, that in my time of need, I'm going to run to you. When Peter turned his back on you three times and denied you, he ran to you because he knows that you have a good resume in his life. He knows that the Lord who saved him once will save him again. God is faithful to you. So after you invite that moment, if you are far from God, and what I mean by that is this, if you have never made a decision to say, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life, God, I want the things that that pastor speaks about. I want hope. I don't want to drown anymore. Jesus, I want you. I need you. I want to be in a relationship with God. I have felt far from you for too long. Jesus, today is the day, a new beginning for me. If that's you, I want you to pray this prayer with me. The Bible says, if you surrender your life to Jesus, if you believe he's the son of God who died for your sins and you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you. So if that's you and you want the forgiveness and you want the full healing of your soul and even healing through COVID-19, would you pray this prayer after me? I invite you to do that. And if you do, and you believe that with your heart and confess it with your mouth, the Bible says you're saved. Let's do that together. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of every moment that I have fallen short. I believe that you are the son of God who died for my sins and rose from the dead. I place my hope, I place my trust in you alone. Holy Spirit, I invite you in to make your dwelling in my heart. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Guys, if that's you and you just prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you're saved. There's a celebration happening in heaven right now for you. They're celebrating you because today's the day of your birth. And you know what? 
If I die today or I die a hundred years from now, you and I have the full assurance, if you've made that faith commitment, that you are going to heaven. God will no longer hold your sin against you. He will no longer hold your pain against you. He will no longer hold your shame against you. And healing is now possible. If you get sick, all you have to do is pray to the Lord Jesus for healing. And if it's His will, He's going to heal you. And if it's not, your soul is still healed. And that's the greatest news on this Good Friday. Right now, I'd like to invite all of you to partake uh, in the Lord's Supper with me, or we call it communion. We're commanded in Scripture to do this together as a remembrance of what Christ did. And if you're a follower of Jesus, many of you might be for the first time, I want to give you a moment. Go and grab crackers, a piece of bread, a little bit of juice, or even water. Uh, This is a uh, figurative exercise that represents a very real reality. See, the, the bread represents his body. And the the juice or the liquid represents his blood. And and scripture, uh, go ahead and get that real quick. And um, scripture tells us as we approach the communion table to do it with the right heart. And the way we do that is we have to search our heart. Is there anything in us that is sin? And if it is, we need to confess that to God. Or maybe you and I are holding a grudge or resentment or bitterness against someone else in our life and we need to forgive them. Let us take a moment to ourselves and do that. Let's pray right now and let's ask God to forgive us of our sins and to help us to forgive those that maybe have sinned against us. Let's take a moment quietly to ourselves. Dear Lord God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would forgive us, God, of our sins, corporately, collectively. We also ask, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus that we, Lord God, would extend the same grace you've given us, the same mercy you've given us. Let us extend it outwardly, Lord God, and not hold our record of wrong. Lord God, give us the ability to forgive those who have sinned against us. In your name, Jesus, we pray, amen. If you would right now, pick up the bread or the cracker that you have. Scripture says that, uh, man, the night before he was betrayed, right? The, The Lord's Supper, he grabbed the bread and he broke it and he distributed it out to his disciples. And he said, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Would you do this in remembrance of me? Let us take a piece and let us eat together. In the same way, scripture says, after eating supper, he took the wine and he lifted it. And he says, this is my blood of the new covenant. Would you do this as well in remembrance of me? Shall we drink together? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, guys, as we conclude our service for the day, I just want to encourage you, if you made a faith decision to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, or you want more information about becoming a follower of Jesus, we want to know about it. We want to celebrate with you or possibly answer any questions you might have. Please email us at fusionchurchny.com forward slash believe. Again, that's fusionchurchny.com forward slash believe. We want to celebrate with you and answer any questions you may have. Guys, our service isn't over just yet. We have uh, some important announcements for you guys. Uh, We'll be seeing you on Sunday. Hey everybody, wasn't that an awesome service that we just had? We are so thankful for what God is doing, uh, not just in, in Fusion Church, but in the Hudson Valley and in the world. We are choosing today to place our trust in our King because God is bigger than COVID-19. Your faith is bigger than COVID-19. If you made that decision today and said, man, I want Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of my life, or maybe you want more information about becoming a follower of Jesus, let me uh, connect you right now with us. We want to hear about it. We want to celebrate with you. We want to answer questions for you. If you would email us at fusionchurchny.com forward slash believe. Again, that's fusionchurchny.com forward slash believe. We want to hear about that. Or maybe you have a prayer request. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're going through something. We want to pray with you. We want to come alongside you uh, as a church and, and do whatever we can to support you during this season that we're all in. If you have a prayer request, you can go onto our app, uh, which you can get uh, by texting Fusion app to 77977. Let us know how we can pray for you. Or maybe you're new to Fusion Church and you want to be part of what God's doing here. Man, fill out a connection card. You can also get that on our app or our website. Uh, Again, you guys know how to get in the app. I I just shared that with you. But fill out that connection card. Let us know how we can best uh, connect with you and get the information that we have to you. Be in the know of what's going on here at Fusion Church. 
Uh, right now we're going to transition and we're going to worship God through our tithes and offerings. But before we do that, we have some exciting stuff going on here at Fusion Church. As the world gets darker, as things out there seem like it's getting really hard, the church has to shine brighter. And I really believe God is calling us to be the light that he had called us to be in scripture, the salt of the earth that he called us to be in scripture. You and I, we're ambassadors. We carry on the good news. And scripture says, blessed are the feet of those who carry the good news. Guys, that's you and I. We're so excited that this month we are partnering with the Community Action Partnership for Dutchess County to donate to their food pantry so that we can bless local families who are in need. So th during this time of COVID-19, there's lots of families in financial difficulty who lost jobs and or have had decreased finances. And we just want to be able to bless them with food and hygiene items. So we're so excited to be able to partner with them. If you would like to give monetarily towards this cause so that we can purchase some food items and hygiene items, you can do so on PushPay. There is a, um, a designation that says Community Outreach and you can uh, uh, donate that way. There's also another way. If, you, if you're at the grocery store and you're picking up extra food items and extra shampoo and soap, you can also prepare that and you can email the office at office at fusionchurchny.com and we can coordinate a curbside pickup or a curbside drop off at the office. So please just let us know. We are so excited that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus even in the midst of COVID-19. Amen. Also remember this, man, you, you give to God faithfully through a church. You don't actually give to a church, you give to God through a church. So right now, as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord, let me encourage you, you can give here to Fusion Church uh, through our app. You can uh, give right there. You can give through our website by going to the menu and hitting the Give tab. You can text to give, which is super easy, super secure. You can text Fusion Give, that's one word, to 77977, or you can mail in your tithes and offerings to Fusion Church, P. Box 190, Fishkill, New York 12524. Uh, but with that being said, let us pray for our offering real quick. Father God, we thank you, Jesus, for all that you've given us, God. You have uh, called us to be stewards of what belongs to you, God. These are your resources. We now give back to you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we know, Lord God, you will use it to bless people and to grow your kingdom. With that, let me pray over everybody uh, the, a mosaic prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May his countenance be lifted upon you, and may he give you rest. And with that, I say, he who once came, Jesus, he is faithful and he will come again. Guys, God bless you. May you uh, just have a blessed weekend. We'll see you Easter Sunday on our online service at 10 a.m. and 12 noon. Guys, we love you.